What's up everybody? So in this video we're going to be talking about everything that you need to know for D3.1 HL, so all the higher level content. There's a ton of things we gotta know, but they're all super interesting. Now, as usual, right before we dive in, go, if you have not, if you have not yet, go check out teachme.org for tons of super awesome, the most beautiful notes you'll ever see, and tons and tons of IB style questions, even mock exams. We have some mock exams on the website now for you guys to try out before your final exams. So go get yourself a, a big brain membership at teachme.org. So now, without further ado, let's get started. Let's talk about puberty first. How can we define puberty? Puberty is a life stage when an individual becomes sexually mature. We're going to see exactly what that means on these little stick figures below very shortly. Now, the first question most people ask at this age is, when is my puberty going to start? Well, the thing is, that answer is very difficult. It's very hard to answer that question because the range is humongous. Some people may start puberty at like 9 years old, and other people may start at 18 years old. The range is very large. I would say, by average, a female starts puberty 2 years earlier than males. So if we say the average time for males to start puberty is 13 or 14, for a female it might be 11 or 12, okay? So the average time of a female to start puberty is earlier. And that's usually why females reach sexual maturity a bit earlier than men of their age. Um, now the next question is, when? When does puberty start? I mean, what makes it start? Why do you wake up one day with a big pimple on your forehead? Why does it happen? Let's see, it all starts in your lovely big brain. So if we take a look at a specific area in the brain, this area here, um, this green area is called the hypothalamus. It's above this little ball sack looking area here. Now, when your time comes, your body will know whatever age you are, and it's like, okay, my guy, time for puberty. This hypothalamus is gonna make a little molecule called GNRH, GNRH. And this molecule will be released into the bloodstream and carried down to this yellow area here called the pituitary gland. Now specifically, the pituitary gland has a posterior part and an anterior part. This GNRH is going to travel by bloodstream to the anterior part. And it's going to come out of the blood vessel here and tell these cells here and tell them to make other molecules. Now specifically, it's going to trigger the anterior pituitary to make these two molecules, FSH and LH. FSH and LH. Now, FSH and LH can go many places of the body. We're focusing on these two, the ovaries in the females and the testes in the males. So FSH and LH can go to the ovaries of the female or to the testes in the male. And these guys are going to now tell th these two areas to make their own hormones. In females, it will trigger the ovaries to make estrogen and progesterone. We've talked a lot about these in the SL video when we talked about the menstrual cycle, right? They had a very important role and testosterone in males. We're gonna talk a lot about the effects of testosterone on the body and all of its functions, okay? <clears throat> so now my next question is for you guys. I'm gonna reveal this for you guys here. Um, this is the full spelling of these things because I have the abbreviations here. Now, notice how for LH and FSH, they are classified under the category of gonadotropins. Basically, gonadotropin means gonad loving. They love the gonads. What are gonads? A gonad is basically your private part. So in this, in females, it's the ovaries, and in males, it's the testes, right? The ovaries is like the female version of, of your balls, of males' balls, okay? So gonadotropins, they are gonad loving. They, these guys love to go to the gonads and tell them to do stuff, all right? Okay, so now this brings us finally to the stuff we want to see. What effect is testosterone going to have on the male body? And what effect is estrogen and progesterone going to have on the female body? Because this is what happens. These guys, these hormones increase when puberty starts happening. And they are responsible for all these changes that I'm going to talk about now. So, look at this little kid. He's a young boy. Okay, he's got no mustache, no pimples. He's short. He's not strong. He's got an underdeveloped genitalia and testes. He's a young kid. So what's going to happen when testosterone starts increasing at puberty because of this cascade of events starting from the hypothalamus? Let's take a look. Many things, man. Look, he became bigger. He developed physically, became taller, more muscular, okay? Um, he got acne. Not all of us are blessed with acne. For example, me, I have acne. Um, unfortunately, I'm not one of those people who just have perfect skin all throughout their life. Um, facial hair, mustache, or beard. Some people, it takes longer. For me, it took like till 20 Two, to start being able to grow facial hair. Um, there's 
pubic hair, there's armpit hair, chest hair, back hair if you're unlucky. Um, also, the private parts, so your testes and penis will start developing and increasing in size. Mm, your voice may deepen. Now, other than these physical things, you may also have mental changes. You may become emotional. We're also emotional at this age, crying about everything, happy one moment, sad the next, right? Your emotions are in turmoil. Left, right, center, top and bottom, everything, everywhere. Okay, and so that's, that's a big thing. And also, sex drive, right? When you're nine or eight years old, you don't give a single schnitzel about females. I know when I was a kid, I was like, oh, sports all the way. That's all I care about, my sports and my video games. And then when I hit puberty, now all of a sudden, for some reason, I like females, right? So sex drive. So sex drive changes because of this hormone testosterone. Okay, what about females? Let's take a look. Many things. Many things overlap. Acne. Um, the private parts will enlarge, so breast will start to develop, the vagina will start to develop. Now, because they can start, remember, we saw estrogen and progesterone are responsible for starting the menstrual cycle in females. So these guys will now allow her to be able to do uh, her menstrual cycle so she can become pregnant. Um, in males, the voice deepens a lot, but in females, it's very mild, the voice deepening. Now, another thing that's not obvious in this diagram is females, their hips widen. And it's very important that their hips widen for childbirth. If their hips widen, it allows a baby to pass out of their body. Because remember, there's bones here and the baby can't pass out if the, if the bones are very compact. So when the hips widen in the pelvis, in your hips, it allows the baby to be able to pass during childbirth. So that's very important. You can't see it on this diagram. And of course, females also have the same issues as males. We get emotional and we have a sex drive. Okay, so let's reveal here. See if I miss anything major. Obviously, there are some other small things. Oh, I miss erections. That would have been, an, um, I didn't want to put it here, like put it up because that would have been uncomfortable for you guys to look at. So thank me for being considerate, guys. Anyways, um, these are the key things you guys should know. Obviously, there are other things I'm sure you can think of, but these are the main things you guys should be concerned about. There's obviously more, but I'm not going to mention everything. It's going to be a crazy list. So these are the key things you should know about for the IB. And remember, all of these changes, thanks to these guys testosterone in males and these guys in females. Next, we're gonna be talking about spermatogenesis. Why spermatogenesis? Remember for males during puberty, one of the key changes that happens is development of testes. And this involves two things. One, the testes will increase in size. Two, the testes will start to function properly. What do the testes normally do? The testes normally make sperm cells. So during puberty, males are now able to start making sperm cells, all right? And that means they can do sexual reproduction and they can have a baby. Now, the process of making sperm is called spermatogenesis, okay? So the process of forming mature sperm or spermatozoa that is spermatogenesis. So right now you're like, okay, my God, what the heck is the difference between sperm and spermatozoa? Don't worry. That's a very good question. And we're going to address that very shortly. For now, just know that spermatogenesis is the process of forming sperm. Okay. So to understand sperm and how it's made, we need to look at the structures, right? We know spermatogenesis happens in the testes, right? We know that already. So let's take a look and zoom into here and look at some structures. So sperm, as we'll see later, is made here in the testes. After it's made inside the testes, that sperm will be sent to the epididymis, this structure right here. In the epididymis, it will um, mature further and learn how to swim, okay? It will learn how to swim here, all right? And now when you ejaculate, okay, so when you have intercourse and you release a sperm, the sperm will be moved from the epididymis through this vas deferens, this vas deferens, all the way out the penis, right? So that's the key structures we need to know, know here. Now, it's very important to understand this. A lot of people wonder, why the heck are balls or testes located outside of the body? Why not like the females? Why are, you know, the females, the ovaries are located on the inside? So why are males' testes on the outside? It's because in order for sperm to develop properly, they require a very specific temperature, okay? And that temperature is, is two to three degrees lower than the inside of the body. So the inside of the body is too warm for sperm to be able to develop properly. But outside the body, the temperature is a bit lower and that allows sperm to be able to develop properly. All right, so that's why it's located on the outside, guys. So now let's take a step further. Let's slice open this testes and see exactly specifically where sperm is made. 
So we slice it open, we can see, holy moly, there's a lot of little pipes, a lot of little pipes wiggling and waggling. What do we call these little pipes? We call these little pipes semi-nephrous tubules. Semi-nephrous tubules, all these little pipes. Now look on this diagram, we're zooming into one pipe and look and slicing the pipe open and seeing what's going on in the inside. It's madness, look at all those cells. Okay, so this is now perfect. Oh yeah, I forgot to label test these guys. Now this is perfect. This is now where I can explain what I mean by sperm and spermatozoa. So sperm is what we call an umbrella term. It means it's a very broad term. It does not mean anything specific. Because, look here, all of these cells here in the seminiferous tubule, they are all sperm cells, okay? But all of these sperm cells are at a different stage of development, all right? So all of these are sperm cells, but each different stage of development of this sperm cell is given a different specific name, okay? So a baby sperm cell will be given a kind of name. And the most mature sperm cell, the final sperm cell, will be given another name, but they are all sperm cells. So that's why sperm is an umbrella term. It's a broad category, including all the different kinds of sperm that exist, all the different ages and maturation of sperm that exist, all right? So that's why spermatozoa is what we call the final sperm. This is the sperm we all recognize. That's the mature final sperm, all right? So spermatogenesis, coming back to it, is the process of forming mature sperm, these guys, spermatozoa. Now, what I want you to notice is that um, in the process of making sperm, it usually happens from here to here. Let me show you. All these most outer rings, all these cells are the most young sperm, the baby stem cells, the most young sperm. And then this layer here, are, these sperm are a bit older. They're a bit more developed. And then the next layer, they're even more developed. And then the final layer, they're the most developed. This is the final stage of sperm, all right? So you can see that sperm develop from the outer layer towards to the lumen of this seminiferous tubule, towards the center of the pipe of the seminiferous tubule, all right? Now, the one thing, you guys, we're gonna look at this process in detail very shortly. So this is just the big picture, guys. Now, the one thing you guys should know is that after spermatogenesis, so after we form this spermatozoa, um, there's one problem. Although this sperm looks right, it has the flagellum, it has the acrosome, it has all the structures that makes it a mature sperm, it has one problem. Although it has legs, it cannot run. Although it has a tail, it cannot swim. Okay, so at this point, it looks right, but it can't swim yet. So at this point, what happens is um, the, the seminiferous tubule has a little muscle layer surrounding it. So it will squeeze and it will contract and squeeze all of these mature sperm, the spermatozoa, all the way down all the way down to the epididymis, all right? Make it clear here. Yeah, so we'll squeeze it all the way to the epididymis. And in the epididymis, these spermatozoa will now mature further and learn how to swim. Because once they learn how to swim, now when you ejaculate, your sperm will be successful at reaching the egg, okay? So that's, that's very important. So spermatogenesis is the process from baby sperm to spermatozoa. And then after spermatogenesis, these guys will be moved to the epididymis where they're stored and they, where they learn how to swim, okay? So that's the big picture, guys. The next question that is commonly asked by you students is, why do we need a sperm cell? Why can't we make a baby with any of the other cells in our body? Well, the very important thing is, sperm cells contain half the amount of DNA compared to any other cell in our body. That's the key. That's the key. Let me show you why that's important. You know, all the cells in a human contain 46 chromosomes, except for sperm and egg, right? Sperm if you're a male and egg if you're a female. Because we have 23 pairs and each pair contains one copy from the mother and one copy from the father. So if we have 23 pairs, then we have 46 chromosomes in total. We call this diploid or 2N because we have two copies for each chromosome pair, one from the father and one from the mother. And same goes for the female. Now, when we do spermatogenesis and oogenesis, right? Spermatogenesis is when we make a sperm and oogenesis we're gonna talk about later is when the female makes an egg. What we're doing is we're making a very special cell. Um, let me show you. In Males, we're making a sperm cell, and a sperm cell is super special because look, it contains only half the amount of DNA compared to our normal body cells. So it will have 23 chromosomes total, it is, and we call that haploid, or N, because we only have one copy for each chromosome. So therefore, we only have 
23 chromosomes, whereas in our normal cells, we have two copies per chromosome. So we have 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs, but now we don't have pairs anymore. We only have one copy per chromosome. The same goes for the egg. Now, why is this very important? It's very important that we can make these two cells because now when they get together with fertilization, guess what happens? Now they combine their DNA together to form a cell called the zygote that now has what? 46 chromosomes, 23 plus 23. So that means we are diploid again. We have 46 chromosomes, one copy from your, um, your, your um, each pair has one copy from your father, which came from the sperm, and the one copy from your mother, which came from the egg. So now you have a normal cell. And this cell will, will be, is your very first cell. So this cell is going to divide and divide and divide by mitosis until we form your whole body, right? Your whole body is a full baby. So that, my friends, is why we need to make sperm and egg cells, because they contain half the amount of DNA compared to our normal cells. So that's what spermatogenesis does. We make these cells that contain half the amount of DNA compared to our normal body cells. Now we know everything that we need to know in order to understand this detailed process that we're going to talk about now of spermatogenesis. So what we're going to do now is we're going to zoom into this area here of the seminiferous tubule and we're going to talk about the steps that happen here to make this spermatozoa. Now notice how I'm zooming into this area. Um, and I'm gonna show you now, we're gonna zoom in here on the next page. So look, here we are zoomed in. Look what we can see. We can see a little bit of the lumen of the seminiferous tubule. We can see the wall of the seminiferous tubule. And we can see a little bit of space right outside the seminiferous tubule because in this space, right outside, so surrounding these seminiferous tubules, there are important cells and blood vessels that are required for spermatogenesis to happen properly. So that's what we're zooming into here. That's what we can see here, the lumen, our seminiferous tubule wall here, and the space outside of the seminiferous tubule. So I hope this diagram makes sense. Now, straight off the bat, notice how there's no space for me to write sentences and words of the steps that's happening on this slide. So basically, I'm gonna jump between this slide and this one here as I explain the process, because here I will uh, reveal the words that you guys need to know. And this will just be the diagram to visually show you guys what's happening, okay? So hope that helps you guys. For access to our full-length premium videos and so much more, head over to teachme.org now.